sing along with Lee. Amen, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Uh, for the second week in a row, you're probably home and you're on your couch, all cozy and with your coffee or tea or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, welcome again to Calvary Baptist Church. I'm Joe Ritz. I'm the executive pastor here at Calvary Baptist Church. This is Ron Hudson. He is our lead pastor, and uh, we just want to welcome you this morning. If you are online for the first time, shoot us a comment uh, in the comment section or give us a thumbs up. Let us know how you like the service, and um, uh, again, welcome. We have um, a couple of uh, announcements to make. If you want to join the emergency response team, you can go online, uh, cbcfamily.church, and you can um, uh, push the uh, want to serve and get on that, um, that committee so that you can help serve our elderly and uh, the folks that are in need of uh, food and water and things like that. Uh, but our emergency response team is just awesome. So um, if you want to join it, go ahead and click that and sign up. 
Also, uh, to give, you can do the same thing. You can go to uh, cbcfamily.church, hit the click button and, uh, or the give button, and then you can go ahead and give there. Or you can text an amount to 84321. Uh, would really be appreciated. Uh, so a um, couple of things to uh, keep in mind is um, stay in. If you don't have to go out, stay in. Listen to your president, listen to the government so that uh, we can all keep safe and keep this uh, virus from spreading. And um, so if you don't have to go out, make sure you stay, stay inside. So uh, let's go to the Lord and open up our service in prayer. Dear gracious God, we thank you so much. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for everything that you've done for us and keeping us safe and, and just giving us a, a blessed week, Father. Uh, we just ask that you be with those folks that are um, uh, dealing with maybe sickness, illness now, uh, Lord, in our, in our church family, if there are any. Uh, God, we just ask that um, uh, you would uh, take this this. Uh, worship service this morning and just may it be pleasing to you father and may everything that we say and do this morning honor and glorify your son jesus christ and it's in his name we pray amen all right let's continue singing we're going to sing a song called blessed be your name
then everybody will sing along together. So just do that, sing together. That's the whole reason we do these songs, is so that we can sing what our hearts want to say, so that we can worship and honor God and lift up his name. So we're going to sing one that we know well as a church. Um, if you're joining us online and you haven't got to visit us before, this is one of our favorite songs. It says, come as you are. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been and wherever you are right now. Come brokenhearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Because of your sacrifice, we have the opportunity to come as we are. We thank you that in you there is eternal life. Life that supersedes any other fear or problems that are going on, Lord. We can trust you. And I thank you so much for this incredible moment where we get to worship together with our family. special. God, I 
pray we would just take advantage of this. That we would just enjoy these moments together. And whatever comes, God, that we would trust you. That we would know that you are with us. And it's because of your grace that we can be kind to our neighbor. We can follow you. Be with us this morning as we sing, as we sing one more song to lift up your name and praise you. We pray you would hear our voice as surrender.
Please prepare your hearts for the reading of God's holy word. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 91. We're going to read the first six verses. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Let's pray. Dear gracious God, we just come to you, and God, we just pray for our country. Pray for those folks that are out there that may have, lost their jobs because of the situation that we're in we just pray for them and just show them that you are with them God for this church and this church body father if there's need out there God just um, have them come to us so that we might be able to help them God we know that you are the one that we can seek refuge to Lord, we love you. We know that we can find our peace in you. Father, be with the president right now and all the folks that are making decisions that are uh, to stop this, this spread of the virus, Lord. God, just help us. Just put your hand upon us and give us that peace and that joy and that protection that your word promises us. God, we love you. We love Jesus. And we know that he loves us, and it's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. Good morning once again. I'm Pastor Ron Hudson, lead pastor at Calvary Baptist Church, and I'm so glad you're joining us on our live stream at live.cbcfamily.church. This is week two of our series, At Your Service. At Your Service. And last week we talked about fear. Last week we talked about fear, and this week we want to talk about confidence. Have you ever met someone that was overconfident, like way too confident, more confident than they need to be? Maybe that's you when you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning and, you know, you think you, you got the guns or, or something like that. There's, there was actually this guy recently in the news. Um, I don't know his name because he's a, he's a sportsing person, and I don't know the sportsing people, but I do know what he did. Um, maybe you recognize this. Uh, Utah Jazz, is that right? Yay, I'm getting a thumbs up from Joe. So jazz, so apparently he's a musician of some sort. Uh, No? Okay. Well, anyways, he was giving this conference, and at the end, you know, all the talk about the COVID-19 and stuff, he does something, and I want to show you what he does, so check this out right here. (laughs) Oh, look at that. He's touching every mic. I'm just going to touch that. Ha, ha, ha. And then uh, you can see on his face right there, he's got that, like, cheese grin. I don't know if you could tell in the, in the video, but he's got like a cheese grin on his face like, ha ha, this is hilarious. Well, later on, he tested positive for the coronavirus and the NBA canceled all of basketball. Um, so there's that. He was totally overconfident. And it's easy for us to become overconfident. And that's not the confidence I'm talking about. Uh, that's not the confidence we're talking about at all. In fact, the confidence I'm talking about is the confidence that we read in Psalm chapter 19 with Pastor Joe. In Psalm chapter 91, it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. There is a shelter that we can dwell in. There is a fortress that we can dwell in and a fortress from fear. David specifically mentions the deadly pestilence, which I think is really appropriate at this time to look at. Next, let's look at verse 4. 
In verse 4, it says, he will cover you. He will cover you with his pinions. And what are pinions? Does anybody know what pinions are? You could put in the comments below. Maybe you're putting it. I, I can't see right now. But pinions are just feathers. They're wings. Um, he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. So you won't fear. God will cover you, and you will find refuge under his wings. We don't have anything to fear or to be afraid of. No fear of the plague, because God, God is a bird. I mean, it said he's going to cover us with, oh, that's the wrong picture, sorry. Oh, wrong picture. Let me, let me see. Nope. Uh, God, here we go. So God is, uh, is this what we're saying? We're a giant um, bird man. God has giant bird man arms, and he has some kind of medically sealed wings that will protect you from breathing in pathogens. Um, and if you are religious enough, then you will be protected by this magic medical wing arms. Is that what David is saying in Psalm chapter 91? I don't think so. Do you think this is what David meant? Or do you think there's something else going on here? Well, we could see from the way the text is written that this is poetry. This is poetry. So when David is writing these things, he's not being literal here. He's being figurative. Why would he be figurative? Why wouldn't he just come out and say exactly what he wants to say? Why wouldn't he explain this to us? Well, the whole styling of the text and the book, it's written in Psalms, tells us that David is playing with human language and images to help explain something much bigger. Something way bigger than birds or plagues. So if it's not about physical things like giant wings, then what is it about? It's about things that you can't necessarily see or touch. What kind of things can't you see or touch? Well, I can't see you right now and I can't touch you. But that doesn't mean that you're not real, right? What other things can we not see or touch? They're called intangible things. What about spirit or emotions? What about thoughts? You can't necessarily see them. You can't touch them. But they're real. Well, the Bible says in John, John chapter 4, that God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And that if you want to worship God, to connect with God and to know God, then you have to do that through your spirit. You have to connect with God through spirit. And everybody has a spirit. Every single person has a spirit. You either have a healthy spirit or an unhealthy spirit. Everybody has a spirit. You either have a healthy spirit that connects with God or a sick or maybe even dead spirit that is disconnected from God. And it is in this inner spiritual life that David is talking about. The spiritual life is what your inner world runs on. And the health of your spiritual life is really, really important. And there are things that you can do to be spiritually healthy. Just like there are things that you can do to be physically healthy. For instance, we know that we're supposed to wash our hands and for 20 seconds, right? I hope you're all counting to 20 seconds. It feels like forever. Wash our hands for 20 seconds. Don't touch our face. Apparently, we're not allowed to touch other people's faces. I don't know. That's kind of ridiculous. But in a similar way, David is writing with this beautiful language a description of what a healthy spiritual life would look like. And when I'm spiritually healthy, then I have a fantastic confidence, not in myself, but in God. I have a confidence in God, in God's ability. And if you've never experienced true, healthy confidence in God, then you won't get it. You won't understand what I'm talking about. And that's why David is using poetic language. He's trying to explain something that unless you've experienced the confidence in God, you're not quite going to understand. So how do you know if you're spiritually healthy or not? How do we know if we're spiritually healthy? Well, 1 John 4, which we looked at last week, talks about this. 
John describes a very simple spiritual health assessment. So let's look at that in 1 John chapter 4, verse number 12. It says, no one has ever seen God. So that means that God is not a bird. Um, don't go spreading that. Uh, he doesn't have big wings. And nobody's ever seen him. So um, how would you know if you have God in you if we haven't seen God, right? So that's what he's kind of saying. We've not seen God. Um, and if you don't know if you are spiritually healthy or not, that's totally understandable because nobody's ever seen God. But we do need a test to know if we had God or not and if we're spiritually healthy or not. So here's how you know that you are spiritually healthy. He goes on. If we love one another, then God abides in us. And his love is perfected in us. And by this, by God's love abiding in us, his love being perfected in us, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. If you love others and treat them lovingly, then you know God has rejuvenated and healed your spirit. If you don't love others, then your spirit is unhealthy or maybe even dead. A dead spirit? Yeah, you could totally have a dead spirit. Nicodemus came to Jesus in the middle of the night. Um, he came to Jesus because he didn't want anybody to see him out and about, you know, because of the COVID. And, um, you know, it wasn't actually that. He was afraid that people would question him for going to see Jesus the rabbi because Nicodemus was a leader. And he had a certain, um, a certain reputation to uphold. And so if he goes and talks to Jesus, then people will talk about him. And so he goes to Jesus in the middle of the night. And he asks him a question. He goes to him and says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no man can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Jesus says you have to be born again. Nicodemus then asked an obvious question. Well, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to do that? And Jesus answers. He says, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh, from your mom, is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. It's from God. There is this process. There's this process that God has to do in you and me to make your spirit be reborn so that you can know God, so that you can experience his love and then learn to love supernaturally like God loves. And God wants to do this process in you to bring your spirit alive again. But you have to want it. God doesn't force himself on anybody. Just like you can turn off this stream anytime you want. You can keep scrolling. You can switch over and watch some cool YouTube video. Um, please don't do that. Please just no, don't click that. Uh, <laughs> nobody's making you watch this. Unless your mom. Maybe you're at home in the living room and your mom's making you watch this. Most of you could, could turn this off. But God doesn't make anybody listen to him. He won't make your spirit alive unless you ask him to. So maybe you're thinking that you should ask him. Or maybe you're thinking, I, I don't even know if I should ask God to make my spirit alive. I, I mean, I've done some religious things. Maybe you've prayed a prayer at one time with somebody. Maybe you were even baptized um, at some point when you were a kid or something. And you've done some spiritual rituals, but you still don't know if your spirit is alive. Well, how do you know that you need to be born again? How do you know if you need to have your spirit made alive or not? How do you know if you're unhealthy? Well, if you're unhealthy, then generally speaking, in your daily life, you don't have confidence in God. When you face situations and um, difficulties arise, your first thought isn't, God, I trust you. 
I know you have this and to pray and to connect with him. You don't have confidence in God. Perhaps you are one of those uh, toilet paper hoarders um, who are just stocking up, you know, and freaking out and fighting and rampaging at the local Walmart. That's no confidence in God. Or maybe you view others with fear. And instead of thinking, wow, I want to serve, I want to be kind, I want to help, I want to be generous, you look at others with fear. I would think those are, those are two pretty big indicators that your spirit is either unhealthy or not even alive. If you truly are born again, then your spirit is healthy and you will have confidence in God and you will treat others with love. If you're spiritually unhealthy or dead, then you won't have confidence in God and you'll view others with fear. So what do you do to become born again and spiritually healthy? Well, let's look at John, 1 John 4.15. In 1 John 4.15, we'll, we'll back up to verse 13. It says, By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Now, whoever confesses, there's that word, confesses, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, It's right there, underlined, real clear. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, then God abides in him and he in God. It's this big word. Well, it's not that big. It's only a few syllables. But anyways, confess. Confess. What does it mean to confess? Well, to confess means that we confess our lack of confidence in God. And maybe you haven't thought of that as a sin or something bad to not, to live your life on a daily basis and not have confidence in God. It's wrong. It means that you're living with a dead spirit, which means you're disconnected with God or you're an unhealthy spirit. You're living to what the Bible calls the flesh. You're living to yourself and only what's in the physical world and missing out on all of the Psalm 91 stuff that David was trying to convey where we have confidence in God and no fear. So maybe you confess your, your lack of confidence in God. Maybe you confess your lack of love towards others. And all of us know that murder and lying and stealing are sins. You know, those are the bad ones. And maybe there's some other ones that you've come up with. You are a creative bunch. Uh, but have you ever thought that being unloving towards your family that's sitting with you right now watching this or other people that you know behaving unlovingly towards them, the thoughts that you have while waiting in that self-checkout line at the Walmart or while you're at Target, you know. What? Those thoughts and feelings that are very unloving, those, those are not God-honoring either. And those are evidence that my spirit is unhealthy. And then we confess anything else that we've done that we knew was wrong. And we confess that you believe in Jesus And that he is God's son and has the power to make your spirit alive. And then you ask him. Ask him to be born again. Say, God, please make my spirit alive. Make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your love. And if you do that, then God will respond. He will absolutely do that. He will supernaturally make your spirit come alive. And then you'll understand what David's talking about in Psalm 91. And you'll understand what it's like to have total confidence in God and to not be afraid no matter what is going on, no matter what pestilence or situation is going on around you. You will have peace and trust in God. So, do you want to do that today? Right now, where you're at? You don't have to wait. You don't have to come to this building. God wants to meet with you right now where you're at. So if you'd like to do that, if you'd like to confess and then ask Christ to make your spirit come alive, to be born again, then pray with me. And my words aren't special words. My words aren't magical words, but I had somebody pray with me. And I had somebody sit beside me and put their arm around me. And if I could, I would. I would sit beside you and put my arm around you and pray with you right where you're at so that 
you know you're not alone. And you're not alone. There's people in the stream who are praying for you as I'm speaking, hoping that you will make this decision to receive Christ, to confess, and to ask him to come into your heart. So if you want to do that with me, then I'm going to pray. And you just pray along with me. You can pray the words that I say, or you can pray some version of it, or you can say whatever you want um, from your own self. But understand the, the basics. First, we're going to confess. And then we're going to ask God to make us alive and new. So if you want, pray with me. Let's pray. Dear God, I confess. I confess my lack of confidence in you. I confess my lack of love towards others at times. And I confess that I've done wrong. I knew it was wrong. Please forgive me. God, I confess that Jesus is your son and he has the power to make my spirit alive. Now we ask. Dear God, please make my spirit alive. Please make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your love so that I can learn what David talked about in Psalm 91. So I can have confidence and so that I can start to love with a supernatural, God-sized love towards others around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that, then guess what? Welcome to new life. Welcome to new life in Christ. In 1 Corinthians, Paul writes that anyone who is in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and all the things are become new. That means you're a brand new creature, that God has made your spirit alive inside of you. And if you've accepted Christ, I want, you, I want to let you know that we are praying for you. And to be able to pray for you, I need to hear from you. So put a comment in the chat. Say, I accepted Christ today or amen, or like prayer hands emoji, or something cool, so that we know that you have accepted Christ. Reach out to us. Message us on our Facebook. Um, shoot the church an email through our website, cbcfamily.church, or if you're watching on live.cbcfamily.church, we have chat there. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you in your step of accepting Christ. And if you have that confidence in Christ, either you accepted him today, or you already are a Christian, and you have confidence in Christ, and you're walking in that and you're, you're chomping at the bit to see what God is going to do through you during this season, then there's something you could do too. You could share. You could share Christ. You could share this very message. Like literally, you can click that, the button that says share and send it to somebody who you know needs encouraged. Maybe doesn't have confidence right now or who needs to share the message of Christ with someone else. So share. Share the message. And continue to be the church. We are a church where broken people find hope. And whether we're meeting in our living rooms or online, we will continue to be the church. So be the church. Share the love of Christ with others. Share new life with others this week. Call them on the phone. Continue to text them and message them. Our confidence is in Jesus, and we will continue to be a church where broken people find hope. We will overcome evil with good. So let me pray for you, and then we'll receive our offering. Dear God, I thank you so much for each and every person watching this this morning, for the families gathered together, for the singles who are watching this online, for those that are watching it back later as a replay. God, thank you so much for this time we live in where we have this amazing technology to be able to communicate your word and your message to others. God, I trust you. Help us to be the church. Help us to be loving to others around us. Help us to encourage. Fill us with your presence. Help us to listen to your Holy Spirit as you nudge us, as you push us to do the right thing. And I pray that you would fill us with your confidence and your peace as David talked about in the psalm. We trust you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Each week we take an offering, so if you are um, visiting with us in the chat, um, we're, just, we're just glad that you came, but for many of you, this is your home church, this is your chance to give, um, to fulfill your commitments to the church, and to help broken people find hope through Calvary Baptist. We still gotta pay the light bills and things like that. So, 
you can actually click on our webpage. You can click the give link right above if you're watching at live.cbcfamily.church or you can go to cbcfamily.church, click give. You can also text an amount to 84321 um, or use the Church Center app. There's lots of ways of doing it. I have mine set up automatically, so it just comes out. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry. I don't have to remember. So you could do that too. Um, but let me pray for the offering as we give generously today. Dear God, I thank you so much for the opportunity to give. I know I trust you. My family trusts you as we give. And we pray that you would receive our tithes this morning, our offerings to, uh, to the special offerings um, and other things that we have going on. We pray that you would receive it and you'd be honored as we give. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, one more thing, if you are giving and you want to um, help out our emergency response team, you could select emergency response team in the dropdown and give an amount towards that. All the money that goes towards that will be used to help people get food or supplies um, to take care of those who are going to be in need during the ongoing um, COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you so much for joining us today. We love you guys, and I'll see you back next week. God bless. Do you have to edit? I was like, <laughs> yeah, make sure you keep that in for Sunday morning. <laughs>